Hi everyone, welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I think it is stupendous that you are here with me today for another standout story video. Today we'll be talking about Bartholomew and the Ublek. Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and you want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and below each video click the thumbs up. Also, if you really like what you're doing here, please share us with your friends. Thank you so much. Okay, Bartholomew and the Ublek by Dr. Seuss. Do you know this book? It is a great book and I can't wait to hop in and read it with you. After we're done, we are going to try making our very own Ublek. I can't wait for that either. But first, let's read the book. Bartholomew and the Ublek by Dr. Seuss. They still talk about it in the kingdom of Did as the year the king got angry with the sky. And they still talk about the page boy, Bartholomew Cubbins. If it hadn't been for Bartholomew Cubbins, that king and that sky would have wrecked that little kingdom. Bartholomew had seen the king get angry many, many times before. But that year, when his majesty started growling at the sky, Bartholomew Cubbins just didn't know what to make of it. Yet all that year, the old king did it. All year long, he stared up into the air above his kingdom, muttering and sputtering through his royal whiskers. Humph! The things that come down from my sky! All spring, when the rain came down, he growled at that. All summer, when the sunshine came down, he growled at that. All autumn, when the fog came down, he growled at that. And that winter, when the snow came down, he started shouting, This snow, this fog, this sunshine, this rain, bah! These four things that come down from my sky. But King Derwin, Bartholomew tried to calm him, you've always had these same four things come down. That's just the trouble, bellowed the king. Every year, the same four things. I'm mighty tired of those old things. I want something new to come down. Something new come down? Bartholomew gasped. That's impossible, your majesty. You just can't have it. Boy, don't you dare tell me what I can or cannot have. Remember, Bartholomew, I am king. I know, sire, said Bartholomew. You rule all the land, and you rule all the people. But even kings can't rule the sky. Can't, eh? His majesty flew into a terrible rage. Well, maybe other kings can't do it, but maybe I'm the one king who can. You mark my words, Bartholomew Cubbins, I will have something new come down. But how to get something new to come down? That was rather hard to think up, and for many days the old king stomped around trying to figure out some way to do it. Then finally, late one night, when all the lords and ladies of the palace were fast asleep, just as the king was buttoning his royal nightshirt, he suddenly stopped still. A strange wild light began to shine in his gray-green eyes. Why, of course, he began laughing. They can do it for me. Bartholomew Cubbins, blow my secret whistle. Quick, call my royal magicians. Your magicians, your majesty? Bartholomew shivered. Oh, no, your majesty, don't call them. You hold your tongue, Bartholomew Cubbins. You do as I command you. Blow my secret whistle. Yes, sire, Bartholomew bowed. But, Your Majesty, I still think that you may be very sorry. He took the king's secret whistle from its secret hook. He blew a long, low blast down the king's back secret stairway. And a moment later, he heard them coming, up from their musty hole beneath the dungeon, up the empty midnight tunnel to the royal bedchamber tower, came the magicians on their padded, shuffling feet. Up and right into the room they came chanting, Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff, fista, wista, mysticuff. We are men of groans and howls, mystic men who eat boiled owls. Tell us what you wish, O king, our magic can do anything. I wish, spoke the king, to have you make something fall from my skies that no other kingdom has ever had before. What can you do? What will you make? For a moment they stood thinking, blinking their creaky eyes. Then they spoke a word, one word, Ublek. Ublek, asked the king, what will it look like? 
Won't look like rain, won't look like snow, won't look like fog, that's all we know. We just can't tell you any more. We've never made Ublik before. They bowed. They started toward the door. We go now to our secret cave, our mystic mountain, Nika Tave. There, all night long, we'll work for you, and you'll have Ublik when we're through. They'll do something crazy, whispered Bartholomew. Call them back, your majesty. Stop them. Stop them? Not for a ton of diamonds, chuckled the king. While I'll be the mightiest man that ever lived, just think of it. Tomorrow I'm going to have Ublek. It took Bartholomew a long time to get the excited king to sleep that night, but there was no sleep for Bartholomew the page boy. All night long he stood in the king's window, staring out at the mystic mountain Nikitave. Somewhere up there, Bartholomew knew the magicians were working their terrible magic. All night the magicians did. All night they walked circles around their magic fire, making magic mumbling with their clucking tongues. Oh, snow and rain are not enough. Oh, we must make some brand new stuff. So feed the fire with wet mouse hair. Burn an onion. Burn a chair. Burn a whisker from your chin. And burn a long, soured lizard skin. Burn yellow twigs and burn red rust. And burn a stocking full of dust. Make magic smoke green, thick, and hot. It sure smells dreadful, does it not? That means the smoke is now just right, so quick before the day gets light. Go, magic smoke, go high, go high, go rise into the kingdom sky. Go make the ublek tumble down on every street in every town. Go make the wondrous ublek fall. Oh, bring down ublek on us all. Dawn was just breaking, and Bartholomew was still standing, trembling, watching at the bedchamber window. But now, as the sun rose, Bartholomew smiled. Those silly magicians hadn't done a thing. Then, suddenly, Bartholomew Cubbon stopped smiling. Was he seeing things? No. There was something strange up in the sky. At first, it seemed like a little greenish cloud, just a wisp of greenish steam. But now it was coming lower, closer, down towards the fields and farms and houses of the sleeping little kingdom. It was swirling around the topmost turrets of the palace. Tiny little greenish specks were shimmering in the air right over his head. Queer little greenish blobs just about the size of grape seeds. He stretched out his hand. He started to catch one. Then he pulled his hand back. There was something frightening about those blobs. Bartholomew slammed the window shut. Wake up, your majesty, he shouted. Your ooblek, it's falling. The king sprang out of his royal bedsheets. By my royal whiskers, it is, he cried. Oh, that beautiful ublek, and it's mine, all mine. I don't like the looks of those blobs, sire, said Bartholomew. They're coming down now as big as greenish peanuts. The bigger the better, laughed the king. Oh, what a day. I'm going to make it a holiday. I want every man, woman, and child in my kingdom to go out and dance in my glorious ublek. Out in that stuff? asked Bartholomew. Do you really think it's safe, sire? Stop asking foolish questions, snapped the king. Boy, you run to my royal bell tower. Wake my royal bell ringer. Tell him to ring the great holiday bell. For a moment, Bartholomew Cubbins didn't move. Run, barked the king. Bartholomew ran. Across the sleeping palace, Bartholomew ran. Then up the ladder of the high bell tower, he climbed to the bell ringer's little cubbyhole in the belfry. Ring your bell, he called. His Majesty the King proclaims today a holiday. The old man crawled out of his cot. He grabbed the bell and rope. What's the holiday for, Bartholomew? You'll find out soon enough, said Bartholomew. The bell ringer yanked the rope. Nothing happened. He yanked it harder. Still, nothing happened. Heh. What's wrong with my bell? he murmured. I'd better take a look outside. He poked his head out through the little trap door. Merciful gracious, he gulped. What is that? All over my bell like greenish molasses. Not only your bell, Bartholomew cried. Look at that poor robin down there in that tree. She's stuck to her nest. She can't move a wing. That ublex gooey. It's gummy. It's like glue. Ooh, the bell ringer wrung his hands. If that green stuff sticks up robins, it'll stick up people, too. Someone's got to warn the people, cried Bartholomew. Got to wake them and warn them to stay inside their houses. I'll tell the royal trumpeter, he shouted. He turned and slid like lightning down the bell tower ladder. 
to the Trumpeter's Tower raced Bartholomew Cubbins and on up the steps four at a time. As he ran, he could hear the plop, plop of the oobleck on the window panes. It was pelting against the palace walls as big as greenish cupcakes now. He yanked the covers off the snoring trumpeter. He shoved his cold trumpet right into his sleepy hands. Get up! Warn the people! Blow the alarm! Alarm? yawned the trumpeter. Then his eyes saw the oobleck. Those green things, Bartholomew, where'd they come from? The king, panted Bartholomew. His royal magicians made them. The royal trumpeter leapt from his bed. That king of ours should be ashamed. He jabbed his trumpet out the window. A blow, he shouted, the loudest alarm that's ever been heard in the kingdom of Did. But all the royal trumpeter blew was a glug. My horn, he gulped. One of those green things flew inside it. He tried to blow it out. He couldn't blow it out. He tried to shake it out. He couldn't shake it out. I'll get it somehow, he yelled. I'll pull it out. No, shouted Bartholomew. Don't you touch it. The trumpeter's hand was already in it. His fingers grabbed hold of the lump of oobleck. He could feel it squiggle around in his fist like a slippery potato dumpling made of rubber. He pulled with all his might. The oobleck began to stretch. Then, gloing, the oobleck snapped back inside the trumpet. It yanked his arm back with it right up to the elbow. I can't wiggle a finger, the trumpeter wailed. Oh, Bartholomew, what'll I do? I don't know, and I hate to leave you stuck to your horn, but if you can't warn the people of the kingdom, I've got to find someone who can. Out of the room and down the stairs raced Bartholomew Cubbins. Down to the chamber of the captain of the guards. The captain was humming in front of his mirror, combing the ends of his handsome mustache. Captain, do something, shouted Bartholomew. Do something? Why? smiled the captain. What's wrong? Captain, haven't you seen the dreadful oobleck? It's coming down now as big as greenish baseballs. Oh, that stuff, laughed the captain. What's so dreadful about that, lad? You know, I think it's rather pretty. Captain, pleaded Bartholomew, it's dangerous. Nonsense, snorted the captain. Lad, are you trying to frighten me? Captains, my boy, are afraid of nothing. That stuff's harmless. I'll show you. I'll eat some. Eat some, gasped Bartholomew. Oh, no! But before Bartholomew could stop him, the captain was leaning out his window, scooping up some oobleck on the end of his sword. Don't, captain! Don't! The captain did. By the time Bartholomew dragged him back inside his room, his mouth was glued tight shut with oobleck. He tried to speak, but no words came out. All the noble captain of the guards could do was blow a lot of little sticky greenish bubbles. Forgive me for leaving you, Captain, said Bartholomew, but a captain full of bubbles is no help at all. Bartholomew stretched the poor man out. He left him there on his chamber floor. Bartholomew went tearing through the zigzag palace hallways. I'll get the king's horse. I'll ride through the country. I'll warn the people of the kingdom myself. He pushed open the door that led out to the royal stables. Bartholomew stopped. He could go no farther. The awful oobleck was plumping down now as big as greenish footballs. Too late to warn the people of the kingdom. There were farmers in the fields getting stuck to hoes and plows. Goats were getting stuck to ducks. Geese were getting stuck to cows. Outside the palace it was piling up. Great greenish tons of oobleck deeper and deeper on every roof in the land. There was nothing Bartholomew Cubbins could do out there. Shaking his head sadly, he stepped back inside. But inside, a moment later, it was just as bad as out. With an angry roar, the oobleck was suddenly hitting the palace harder. It was battering and splattering against the walls, as big as greenish buckets full of gooey asparagus soup. Like a sinking sailboat, the whole palace was springing leaks. The oobleck was ripping the windows right off their hinges. It was dripping through the ceilings. It was rolling down the chimneys. It was coming in everywhere, even through the keyholes. From every bedroom in the palace came the howls of lords and ladies, frightened in their nightgowns. They came jumping to their doors. Go back to your beds, get under your blankets, Bartholomew Cubbins went crying through the halls. But nobody paid the slightest attention. Everyone in the palace started rushing madly about. The royal cook rushed down to the royal kitchen. Bartholomew Cubbins saw him trapped there, stuck to three stew pots, a teacup, and a cat. 
The royal laundress rushed outside to save her laundry. Bartholomew saw her, stuck tight to the clothesline between two woolen stockings and the king's best Sunday blouse. He saw the royal fiddlers. They were stuck to their royal fiddles. Everywhere Bartholomew ran, he saw someone stuck to something. They were stuck up by the dozens. Every last friend he had in the world was flopping and floundering, all hopelessly caught in the goo. Then suddenly, in the midst of the hubbub, Bartholomew gasped, The king! Where was the king? He'd forgotten all about him. It was in the throne room that Bartholomew found him. There he sat, old King Derwin, proud and mighty ruler of the kingdom of Did, trembling, shaking, helpless as a baby. His royal crown was stuck to his royal head. The seat of his royal pants were stuck to his royal throne. Ublek was dripping from his royal eyebrows. It was oozing into his royal ears. Fetch my magicians, Bartholomew, he commanded. Make them say some magic words. Make them stop the Ublek falling. Bartholomew shrugged his shoulders. I can't fetch them, your majesty. Their cave on Mountain Nikotave is buried deep in Ublik. Then I must think of some magic words, groaned the king. Oh, what are those words my magicians say? <clears throat> Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff. That's all I can remember, and they don't do any good. The Ublik keeps on falling harder. Bartholomew Cubbins could hold his tongue no longer. And it's going to keep falling, he shouted, until your whole great marble palace tumbles down. So don't waste your time saying foolish magic words. You ought to be saying some plain simple words. Simple words? What do you mean, boy? I mean, said Bartholomew, this is all your fault. Now the least you can do is say the simple words, I'm sorry. No one had ever talked to the king like this before. What? he bellowed. Me? Me say I'm sorry? Kings never say I'm sorry, and I'm the mightiest king in all the world. Bartholomew looked the king square in the eye. You might be a mighty king, he said, but you're sitting in Ublek up to your chin, and so is everyone else in your land. And if you won't even say you're sorry, you're no sort of a king at all. Bartholomew Cubbins turned his back. He started for the throne room door. But then Bartholomew heard a great deep sob. The old king was crying. Come back, Bartholomew Cubbins. You're right. It is all my fault, and I am sorry. Oh, Bartholomew, I'm awfully, awfully sorry. And the moment the king spoke those words, something happened. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words. I'm sorry. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words. It's all my fault. Maybe there was, and maybe there wasn't. But they say that as soon as the old king spoke them, the sun began to shine and fight its way through the storm. They say that the falling oobleck blobs grew smaller and smaller and smaller. They say that all the oobleck that was stuck on all of the people and all the animals of the kingdom of Did just simply, quietly melted away. And then, they say, Bartholomew took the old king by the sleeve and led him up the steps of the high bell tower. He put the bell rope into his majesty's royal hands, and the king himself rang the holiday bell. Then the king proclaimed a brand new national holiday in honor of the four perfect things that come down from the sky. The king now knew that these four old-fashioned things the rain, the sunshine, the fog, and the snow were good enough for any king in all the world, especially for him, old King Derwin of Did. Isn't that a great story? Talk about how powerful apologies can be, don't you think? Yeah, that's definitely something to think about. If you do something wrong, an apology won't necessarily fix everything, but it definitely can make a bad situation better. Definitely something to remember as you grow up and grow old. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to move on today and we are going to make our own oobleck just like is in this book. Of course, our oobleck won't be falling from the sky and it's not quite as hazardous as it appeared in this story. It's a lot of fun to play with though. So let's go ahead and get started.
Before we do this, let me just show you a little bit about what Ublek is and about what it, how it moves. All right, so you can see here, I have some green stuff down in the bottom of my bowl. I am going to pull my fork along it. Do you see that? Do you see how it kind of pulls up and it becomes hard? You can see there it comes hard and then as I let it run off, it becomes liquid. This is something that is so much fun to play with your hands with, but I want to make ours before I dig in with my hands because your hands really do get a little bit messy and I want to be able to um, make my oobleck without getting everything oobleck-y, if that makes sense. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So to make your oobleck, you will need a few supplies. You will need some cornstarch and some warm water. That's basically all you need. Of course, you will need something to mix it in, so a bowl. And then if you want to make your oobleck green, like in the story, you should have some green food coloring. Um, a measuring cup will definitely help you make this oobleck the best that it can be. <laughs> and then you might need a fork or a spoon or something to mix your oobleck. Um, I will tell you, I think the best way to mix it is with my hands, so that is what I am going to be using. All right, so this is a very simple recipe. You are going to use two parts of cornstarch to one part of water, and you are going to mix that together. So what that means is that if you use two cups of cornstarch, then you are going to use one cup of water. So double the cornstarch and then halve the water, if that makes sense. All right, so I am going to put in two cups here of cornstarch into my bowl, and then I am going to put a cup of water. So two parts cornstarch, one part water. And if this does not have to be perfect. You will have to play with it a little bit. Uh, the two parts to one part rarely works exactly. You'll still have to play with it a little bit once you get it mixed. So I'm not being exact here. Um, I am, oops, you know what, I'm going to turn this so I can actually get water out of the pitcher. So here's my cup of water, and I am dumping it in. And then I am also going to, at this point, put a few drops of green food coloring in. This is optional, but it kind of makes it feel a little bit more official, don't you think? All right, so once you have this, you simply start mixing. So you just dig in with your hands or your fork if you want, and you just start mixing. And it's a really weird texture. I hope that you can see it. My guess is that you can see some of it, but you really don't experience this until you put your hands in it and play around with it. All right, so you just keep mixing until it becomes kind of this goopy mixture. Um, and you really want to be mixing in all of the cornstarch, so make sure that you're getting down into the bottom of that bowl, into the seam, and you are mixing it. Now, I know you can't see this, but I definitely feel that I am scraping up some stuff off the bottom of this bowl. But the top is still very, very liquidy, so I am going to put just a little bit more cornstarch in to see if I can kind of firm that up. I mean, there still will be liquid, but um, this is just something I want it to be a little bit firmer. And this is whatever you want it to be. So if you feel like this is the perfect consistency, then you have at it and just go with what you like. I think it's kind of fun to be a little bit more, see where it feels solid. Oh, I can't, I can't pull any up right now. Um, there's some solidness down under that liquid, and I like that a little bit better than being as liquidy as it was before. I think this is a pretty good consistency. I actually think I might add just a little bit more cornstarch, just to see if I can firm it up just a little bit more. And you can see I'm adding in cornstarch in relatively small portions, and that's just because it's easier to uh, continue mixing with just one thing. If I'm able to add just a little bit of cornstarch, then 
I don't have to worry about adding too much cornstarch because if I add too much cornstarch then I need to add more water and it can become kind of a never-ending cycle. So I'm just going to be adding a little bit as I go. Of course if you feel like yours is too solid you can add a little bit of water but do be aware that it's easier to add smaller amounts as you go than it is to try to correct if you accidentally add too much of one thing. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, yes, I think this is a great consistency. And yes, there's stuff there on the bottom that is so weird feeling. All right, you can see this is a really cool liquid. I guess it's a liquid. We watch it kind of fall down there and then it breaks just like that. And then it flows out a little bit more. When I pick it up and squeeze it really hard, you'll see that some liquid comes out between my fingers, but then when I open it up, there's like a hard ball in the middle, and then I just let it sit for a little bit, and it becomes liquid again. This is so cool. I hope you have a chance to put to make your own and play with it, because it is an experience like none other. You know, in scientific terms, this is what's known as a non-Newtonian fluid. So in non-Newtonian fluids, viscosity, which is basically the thickness of a liquid, so that thickness or viscosity can change when under force to either more liquid or more solid. So definitely we see that, right? So the more force that I apply here, the more solid it becomes, and the less force, the more liquid it becomes. I really hope you have a chance to make some and play with this. You definitely won't regret it. Um, so when you're done with this, you can save it in an airtight container. If you do that, when you open it up again to play with it, you might realize that you need to add some more water or some more cornstarch. Not as much as you did to start with, just a little bit to help it either become more liquid or more solid. Um, when you are done with it, this is something that you should throw away. Don't rinse this down your drain. Uh, you can definitely just wash your hands if you needed to do that after you play with it. But don't just dump this whole thing down the drain. It may clog your pipes. This is something to go out straight in the trash. Well, I hope that you have had fun today reading about Bartholomew and the Ublek and then making your own Ublek. I know, I have had a blast. I love making oobleck. Every single time I get to make it, I have so much fun. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this one. I look forward to seeing you on Monday where we will be doing another Masterpiece Monday lesson. I can't wait to make some art with you. Until then, thanks so much for joining me for this one. Thanks for kidding around with me. I will see you next time.